And Rabbi Soloveitchik was our teacher. And he elevated us to a high degree. And uh, three years with him, we came, I mean, we, we loved to study after that. After that, studying became a really spiritual experience, you know. And he had it, so we had it. You know, we, we got that from him. And we were passionate about our, our, our education, you know, fashion. And uh, that's the way I came here as a rabbi, you know. And they had a, a uh, dedication. And uh, that's when I told my people, you know, at night of the dedication, I said, I'm very happy to be your rabbi. I'm very happy to serve you. But I'm going to ask you one favor. One favor is, for three years, please give me a, a chance to work mainly with children, with your children. If I do a good job with your children, please keep me. If I don't, tell me the door. You didn't do a good job with your children means you're not for us. You should, tell, you should have somebody that's very good with children, you know? And I said to myself, you know, I said, everybody says something about a camp, you know? We have to teach our children our customs and our attitudes, and, you know. And we developed the program, we developed songs, we developed, oh, we developed, I'm telling you, the first, the first one was an amazing, amazing success, you know. Uh, and that's it. That was the beginning, you know. I know we could do it. We did it, you know. We had no training at all. We don't know what camp was. We don't know what, what happened there, but we, we just fell into it. That's it. I mean, just... We just fell into it, like, like a, became a swimmer right away, you know? But women that came to us, you know, were, were the older ladies, my people had time, you know, and some younger ones also. And they used to cook for us. Comida, you know what I mean? Oh, man, fish and meat and, and, and bolecas, boremas, and, and couscous. And they used to go around with pets. One second, they used to, preciado, they used to call it preciado, querido. You want seconds, not a more to eat, you know. Like mamas, you know. One of the best things ever happened as far as the call, you know. We had, after that, 100 kids, 120 kids, it didn't matter. And everybody, everybody volunteered. They fought to get in. Boy, that saved them of our lives, saved, saved our lives. Camp. I mean, uh, we had the children for two weeks, you know, and they were, we had fun, but we learned. So I got uh, permission from synagogue, you know, that I'm going to take. Uh, normally, I was allowed a month vacation. I said, one year, let me. I'm, I'm going for a purpose. I'm going to become a moyen. So they allowed me that, and I went. And I got hold of a moyen who teaches. I was with him all the time, you know, for a month, you know, for a whole month. And then he says goodbye, you know, you're, you're okay. So I had a, a diploma and I had a practice, you know, and I came home. And I came home, lo and behold, Jack Babani was born. And uh, they said, did you do anything before? I said, I told him, I, I practiced, you know. And, you know, would you do it? I said, yeah, of course. <laughs> Here the baby's ready. And I'm saying to the people, sing another song. <laughs> It was okay, it was all right, it was all right, it turned out all right. You know. And now he has children, and he has, he has grandchildren. So I did three, three generations, you know, so it feels good. <laughs> I don't know how many he is now. He's over 65. I don't know how old he is. How old are you, Jack? Ah, he was the first one to have a berit over here. My first berit was here with Jack, the Sadak, the grandfather. I got called from Alaska from the chaplain. He says, in Nome, which is across the bay, near Siberia, 
the Jewish men and a Jewish lady that run a hospital up there for the, for the uh, Eskimos. And they, we need a milah. Will you come? I said, ah, we'll go. When we came there, it was cold. They gave us a parka and they put us on a snow sled. And we had a public milah and we did it. You know, it was good. My lady comes to me and says, I run the television for the Eskimos over here and we want you to come to the station. I want to interview you. I said, okay. She asked me, what's a rabbi, what's Judaism, what's a very milah, yeah, all kinds of stuff, you know. She says, rabbi, you know, you want to do something? She says, tonight, six o'clock, get to Holland Station and Channel 6. I said, oh, okay, you'll see yourself. I said, fine. Channel 6, okay. I'm there, I'm speaking Eskimo. They changed the language. <laughs> I was speaking Eskimo, Eskimo, you know what I mean? I just, <laughs> what's going on? I remember that the most difficult Berit Milah, most difficult ritual circumcision that I ever performed was uh, on our uh, firstborn son, Abraham. The night before, I didn't sleep. When the day came, my hands were trembling. I could hardly see straight. Perspiration was running all over me. I approached it with the most trepidation in my life. I've never felt that way before. With my hands shaking, I, I, I performed. And uh, after the performance, I uh, examined Abraham and uh, thank God everything turned out all right. And after that, when it was over, Really, all I wanted to do was to uh, imbibe, take a few beautiful rakis in order to forget all the excitement, in order to forget all the nervousness that I went through. I graduated, you know, after I got my school in Detroit, they had a school, a day school. I saw kids reading Hebrew, I saw kids praying, I saw, I said, well, well, tell me what's happening here. They told me it's a day school. I said, well, that's for me, that's for Seattle, you know. And I went to Rabbi Wogelanter, he agreed right away, you know, and we built a day school, five kids. People who came from Europe found education free, public education free. Wow, I mean, that made them so, I mean, attached to public education, public schools, you know. Anything else was uh, anti-democratic, you know, and that was really their philosophy, you know. So we had, we had to fight against that to build a school, you know. And the one that was against it the most became the president the next year. He said, this is it, you know, this is it. It's not undemocratic, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful and wonderful. And I, I, I made myself a formula then. The formula was, the more opposition you have, the better it's going to be. That's a proof it's a good thing, you know? And then the kids grew to high school age. And the mothers came to me, Rabbi, you have a system whereby they come, become high school age, you send them away. We don't like that. We like to have them here, you know? And what could I do? A bunch of mothers came, you know. I said, okay, is there a movement somewhere? Yeah, he says, that is, that is, we have a movement. What's the movement? He says, we're going to make a high school here. I said, okay, let's see, you know. And we started, I joined them, and I helped build a high school. Yeah. A school, Torah Day School, build, build, build. Build education, that's it. And, uh, we built this synagogue.